Welcome back, guys, and uh, let's talk about IoT. Uh, obviously, this is not chapter two. This is supposed to be chapter eight or nine, but uh, by now we, have, we should have been in the lab doing this, but we can have to do this um, using simulation. Unfortunately, we cannot use Tinkercard for this one because Tinkercard does not support internet-based communications, so we'll have to use, we have to do a little bit of uh, work around. So before we get to the programming part of things, let's talk about, uh, let's just recap what we learned about IoT from the past. So, and before we get to that also, let's talk about uh, the internet in general. How does it work? Um, right now you're on your laptop or your device connected to a modem, then connected to the cloud, then through that connection and protocols, you're connected to a server or uh, or another computer basically that sends you the information that you're looking for. Specifically, you are following this protocol. You are here, you're essentially browsing the internet using a client, uh, which is in this case the browser. You are sending a request, then that request goes through the internet or to the network to the servers. Then the servers receive you control your request, then sends back the information. And all of this is governed by a number of protocols or internet protocols. It governs the, the address, the meaning of these numbers, the, how the information is transmitted, and how the files are transmitted, and so on and so forth. Now, based on that, we can then, we also talked about the IoT framework. And this IoT framework essentially works this way. You have a device that is essentially a controller or uh, any device essentially that has some sensors or some data gathering information. And this is what we worked on when we worked with Arduino. Uh, didn't work on Raspberry Pi, but we did work on Arduino. And essentially, the Arduino device and the sensors is exactly the same way that we did in the previous tutorials or the lab se sessions. You have a device, a controller, and you have some sensors attached to it. The sensors captures data, and then you have the data. In fact, let's just take a look at the sample of the program from last lab sheets. If you remember this, uh, this is taken from one of the students' programs. You define the pins, then you make some initial definitions, and then you go and set up the pin, whether it's input, output, etc. Then you essentially work on the values. Then you capture the actual value. So this is, if, for those who recognize that, this is the ultrasonic sensor. So this is where you actually call the sensor and it goes and captures the values or captures the actual value, the raw data. Then you go, uh, if we need to calibrate the values, then we can calibrate. If we need to display the values, we can display. And then if we need to use the value to automate other components, then we can do that as well. And that's what we already did in our last few tutorials or last few sessions. Now, apart from this, we can also use the information from here, and then we can take it and broadcast it to the cloud. And that's exactly what we were doing today. However, we were not going to be doing it with Arduino. We will be doing it with uh, Raspberry Pi, simulated Raspberry Pi. Now, let's get to that again. So once again, let's recap this part again before we go to the program. See, we worked on this already, which is a device, sensors, captures information, and then display the information and use it to automate other components. Let's just call this whole area here the local machine. In other words, essentially, you are, uh, you are working only within this area. So this whole area right here, let's give it a name and let's call it the local area or the local device. And... Uh, yeah, let's remove this. Yeah. So this whole area here essentially is the local area. You have your sensors, you have your um, actuators, you have input output, and you display the information. So this whole area is the local. Uh, this is essentially task one in, in your project. You're going to have to develop a system that does work only within this area. You have some sensors, capture information, and you have some outputs to response to that information. And you have some input output, and also you know, user interaction, like display the information to the user, and capture user input if needed, and so on and so forth. 
Now with IoT system or data framework, this local system now is connected to the internet or to the cloud. So how do you do that? First of all, you need to broadcast some information from here to the cloud. And this is part one, which is broadcasting information to the cloud. And part of the process of broadcasting the information is uh, steps that we have to do uh, today. Once the information is captured or broadcast, then part two of this will be to view this data into the IoT client. And that will be the discussion of next week. So for today, we're going to be focusing only on part one, which is broadcasting the information. OK, so uh, how are we going to do that? Well, in order to do that, I'm going to actually use an example. Now, remember last week when we talked about uh, lists? And the reason why we did this was for two reasons. We're going to use this kind of list, which is the array list, to simulate sensor data. We don't have an actual sensor right now, so we're going to simulate sensor data using an array. And the reason why we work with a dictionary here is because we're going to use this when we work with IoT data. And I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, now, you know what? Let's just talk about um, broadcasting data to the cloud. So what does that include? So first of all, uh, broadcasting data to the cloud, to the cloud. Well, that actually requires a few steps. Number one, you have to capture raw data. Capture raw data. Now, this one we already did. We already did. This is the part where you have your sensors, and capture information, calibrate it, and have it ready for other use. This one we already did. Then what? Uh, maybe, yeah, you're right. You know what? This is not part of the broadcast. This is actually should be outside of this. So first, you have to have the data available to you, right? So, and then once you have the data, then you can actually uh, broadcast it. So what are you going to do? First step right here, first of all, you have to uh, establish connection. Is that right? Before you can broadcast anything, you have to connect to the internet. So that's exactly what we will do. Second step, we will have to repackage or package the data into a format, onto a, let's call it a web-friendly format. Format. See, because you're going to broadcast the information to the internet, the data has to be packaged in a way that is friendly to the internet. OK, next. Once this data is packaged and everything, then we can then publish the data. Actually send the data to the, to the other side. Now, there's another optional step, which right here, I'm going to put it here, which is optional, which is to verify. Uh, essentially, to verify within your local machine that the information has indeed been sent. Now, um, let's talk about this step a little bit. How do you establish communication or network? Just think about it for a minute. How do you connect your laptop to you to the internet or your, your phone to the internet? You need two elements. First of all, you need hardware. You need an actual modem, is that right? An actual device that you need to connect. And then you need some software setup. Uh, this is where you, you know, the Wi-Fi password, uh, the IP address, and internet protocols and all of that stuff. So Wi-Fi, uh, internet protocols, calls, etc. Sorry, etc. Music, music, etc. And then uh, hardware, you actually need the actual device. So for, for IoT lingo, we're not going to call it modem. We're going to call it IoT gateway. And it's the same purpose of the modem, or the actual physical device of the modem. It's a device, it's a hardware device that is will act as a network card, basically, for those who know how to build computers. A network card, essentially, is a device that you can attach to your computer, allows it to connect to the internet. All right? Now, this hardware device, for Arduino, we don't have it. The no hardware device. And, and that's why, for Arduino, we need a separate separate hardware, separate device. Uh, think of a, in Arduino case, we will have to connect another piece of hardware called a network module, and then we have to do some setup with it, and only then the Arduino will be able to connect to the internet. For the Raspberry Pi, 
we don't have to. It's already built in. So part of the Raspberry Pi hardware is a network device. But for both of them, whether it's built in or whether it's a separate device, you still need to do some setup or some software setup. Maybe the word software is not good here. Maybe we should use the word setup. Uh, you know what? It's fine. Uh, software or setup. OK, so this is essentially the very first element of your program, which is establish connection. OK, next, we will have to package the information into a web friendly format. What is that? Uh, because the IoT is multi-platform, you can use it from whatever system you have or whatever device. All the devices, all the operating systems, and all the browsers, they all must speak the same language. Or at least they have to have something common to talk with. And that something common is called the messaging format, or the internet messaging format, or the text format. There are several ones. And MQ, MQTT is the common one, but also is JSON, uh, which is JavaScript uh, object something, something. I forgot. You'll have to Google it up. But these two are the most common format. We will use JSON. MQTT is mostly for Arduino, because, but because I'm going to be working with Raspberry Pis or, or Python, I'll be using JSON. But either one of them is fine. And they are also inter, uh, interchangeable. So if you have one system working with JSON and then the other side is using with MQTT, they will be able to talk to each other. And then you actually have to do the actual work of sending or you know brought, publishing the data to the internet. We will do that too, as well as the verification. So this is essentially the, the how do I say this, the, the pathway or the, the plan in order to broadcast information to the cloud. First of all, you have to have the data. So this one, you should have it done from before. So let's call this previous work. Or if you're designing system from scratch, then you'll have to do this part first. You'll have to build, build, build a controller. You'll have to do sensors or attach sensors, program them to capture raw data, calibrate. And once you have the data available and ready, then you can come and talk about broadcasting data. OK? So. Which brings us back to this slide right here. So this is the part which is the previous work. Once you have the data ready, then you're ready to talk about this part right here. Now, so which means that we are now here, which is essentially uh, we are broadcasting the data to the cloud. Now, unfortunately for us, we don't have an actual device with actual data. We will have to simulate that. So let's actually go ahead and do this. So I'm going to repeat. This is, by the way, the program that we worked in my last video, which is on lists as well as on, di on dictionary. I'm not going to catch out this one. I'm just going to start a brand new one. I'm going to save the file as, uh, what do you call this thing? Um, IoT or simulate IoT. Yeah, simulate IoT. Dot I. Okay. Oh, we have to select the folder. Okay, we are here. Okay, so simulate IoT. P dot pi. Okay, so here we go. We have a, a ready-made Python program. Oh yeah, and just be, um, oh yeah, I should have talked about this earlier, which is the version. I'm using uh, Python 2.7. Uh, you will see that not, not much of a differences will be actually happening here. But uh, I will talk about the Python versions in another video uh, today, but not this one. OK, so let's go ahead and work with it. So oh, yeah, so what's the program that we're going to do here today? Uh, what we're going to do right now is actually, I'm going to show you something. So water, Sami Hajjaj here. This actually is a paper that I, we published very, very recently in January 2020. It's right here. Published in new This is actually uh, my paper as well as uh, colleagues. And this is my student. Uh, he is a master student, but he's also started working on this project since his capstone project days. So, what actually is this project is about? Uh, you may have seen pictures of this in the slides. So, what's going on is we have a, a water gate. Uh, this is model one, uh, very small, tiny model. And this is model two, also on the table. And this is actual gate. We put it in the field. And uh, what's going on here is that we have an automated system that controls the flow of water. 
if the flow if we want to close the gate we will auto we will automatically close it or open it as you can see here and the controller or the way we control the gate is actually using a servo motor and a controller so we can tell that this is a simpler version of this so we have the motor we have some gearing system and we have the motor driver and we want to open the gate we will just give this a signal to move the turn in a certain direction so that the door will open up and close and so on and so forth. You don't have to worry about the mechanical side of things. Let's just agree on one thing, that we can, uh, then the, the gate here will open and close the gate based on the sensor value. So what's going on here? Essentially, we have a sensor that measures the height of the water. Familiar? This is the ultrasonic sensor. And this sensor actually uses the same technique that we did on measuring distance. And then it measures the height of the water based on a predefined distance, which is the maximum height of the water, it will then signal the gate to open or close. If the water level coming in is too high, then we close the gate so that the water can be re redirected. Um, it's just a matter of way to control the flow of water to you know, sort of water management thing. Now, we don't actually control, I mean, we can control the gate ourselves by giving it a command to open or close. But instead, we make it using sensors. So the sensor would automatically measure the height of the water and then would open and close the gate. In other words, this. Uh, essentially, we have a sensor here that measures the height of the water. And then that sensor, or based on that data, it will open and close the gate. All within the local area. Doesn't Nothing to do with internet or IoT. So what's the point then? The problem with this is that we don't live near the gate. We actually live far away in our homes. So we don't know what's going on at the site of the gate. See, uh, this is the location, or we don't have the picture with the maps. Mm, not here. Uh, no, we don't have it here. But anyway, what's going on is that, see those gates, they are not placed in our office. Maybe this model is, or this, this model here. But in reality, those water gates will be placed on the river, which is in the very rural areas. So imagine that the gate is in far away, hundreds of miles away, and you're not there to watch what's going on. So you don't know what's going on with the gate. Is it open? Is it closed? Is it actually working? Is it the sensor moving? Is it, does it really function the way we want? And that's why we established this whole report you see here. By establishing a remote system that will, we will monitor the status of the gate. What's going on here is that we would want to monitor not only the height of the water, but also the status of the gate. Uh, sorry about moving the thing up and down, but here's actually what's going on. We have, uh, in this example, three gates. So this is the location of the gate. It's actually there, and it's broadcasting information telling us two things. First of all, the height of the water, whether it is, uh, how much is the actual height of the water. And then there's other information that you don't have to worry about, but then this is the temperature and this is the humidity. But for now, this is the height of the water or water level. Uh, where did the picture go? Yeah. Yeah. So this is water level. Uh, ignore the temperature and humidity, but for now, this is the water level. And this is the actual distance. And this is the status of the gate, open or close. So this way, you can actually receive this information from wherever you are in the world, as long as you're connected. And this way, you can then um, monitor the, the, the operations of the gate from home, for example. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing in our program today, uh, maybe a simplified version of it. So essentially, here's our algorithm. Step number one, we will, uh, oh, this is Python, so. so step number one, uh, we will want to uh, measure or measure height of the water. This one we will simulate because we don't have any sensors. Then based on the height of the water, we will then uh, based on water height, open or close the gate. Close the gate. And also when the gate is open or closed, the status of the gate will be updated, you know, whether it's open or closed. So capture, or no, no, not capture. Yeah, why not? Uh, capture or, you know, also status, you know, broadcast. You know, once the gate is open or closed, we then would want to also broadcast its status, the, the status of the gate. 
see, when the gate is open, the status is open. When the gate is closed, the, the status is closed. And then we also want to run other information, another info. So let's do all of that right now. Uh, before we get to that, I want to, um, yeah, let's just do that. First of all, uh, I want to do something uh, quickly. I want to create a while. And you know what? Let's not do that. Let's... So how are you going to capture information? Unfortunately, we don't have sensor. So all of that stuff about sensor and all that stuff, we cannot work with. So instead, I'm going to actually simulate sensor data. So we're going to start from here. So this is actually going to be uh, sensor information. And this is just raw data. And uh, let's just call it, yeah, data set for now. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a trick that we did from this tutorial here, which is we're going we're gonna to loop through it. And we're going to essentially uh, go ahead and do that. So since this is the data set, so for x in data set, uh, all right, so what we're going to do, um, yeah, you know what, let's just do it. So print, uh, I'm going to follow the Python 3 version of print so that people don't complain. <laughs> so water level, water level, yeah, just this, water level. And then I'm going to, since we are using brackets, now we have to use a little bit more than brackets. So, yeah. So we're going to do this, str. OK, if I just do this, right, uh, it won't work because string is a float. And this is a, st a string. Uh, the, the value of the this value right here is actually a number. But this is actually a string. So they cannot be added together. So what we're going to do, we're going to do is we're going to do casting. So str x. And that's it. So essentially, uh, what we're going to do right now is going to loop through this and then print the values. Let's just do that right now. So compile, successfully build, successfully, and then run. OK, done. Actually, what happened was very quickly, because I forgot to put a sleep uh, function. So what happened was is that the, the program actually really did it. it uh, went through all the loop and print all the values. So 2.2, 2.8, 3.3, and here they are. And it didn't continue like constant we didn't actually uh, continue to do this again. So before we get to that, I'm just going to sleep, sleep um, timer. And I'm going to go ahead and import the sleep function. So from time, import sleep. And that's it. And I'm going to declare a new variable called timer. And that timer is going to be for now equal to 0.3. So what's going to happen here is that timer will be here, and we're going to sleep for a while. So it's going to take a little bit longer to run. So compile, run, and yep, yeah, here we go. But then it's going to happen only once, and because we are doing it only once. So to make it happen again and again, we put a while through and then tap everything out. And tap and tap. OK. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So compile. And then it's going to endlessly circle through the line, through the value. OK, Control C. Now, no, if you want to terminate this program and you put Control C, you get this. And to be honest with you, I don't like it. So you see what's going on here? See this? It's called keyboard interrupt. So actually, this is kind of an exception. So I'm going to actually use this to do some sort of a nice trick. But rather than just doing while true directly, let's just put the whole thing inside the try. So try and then tap everything out. Um, this is just cosmetic, to be honest with you. So accept. And now here we're going to do, uh, sorry, not any except, except keyboard enter. Yeah, they were, it worked. So this problem that happened earlier just now, uh, what, this problem right here, we're going to catch it. So when this happens again, it's not going to happen. What this actually happened here is that when I press Control C to exit the program, it caused an error. It's called key interrupt error. Key interrupt when you click on the keyboard to type Control C. 
So to capture this error, you just use con uh, the try and accept. So, okay, so catch it. So what are you gonna do when you catch it? So we're gonna print a nice message. We're gonna say print goodbye. Goodbye. And what does actually this do is, uh, just in case, let's just put it in an extra line. What does actually this do is, and uh, for fun, write exit, which is you're really telling the program to exit. So what is actually going on here with this try function? There's nothing extra, it's just a matter of cosmetics. So now when you run the program and you click on Control C, it will do two things. It will not gonna cause an error. It's gonna actually tell you goodbye and then exit means it's gonna close the window. You know, the terminal window, this window. When you, This is what exit does. It actually closes this window. So let's do that again, run. Okay, it's running, cool, so control C. Terminate back job, yes, terminate, and goodbye. Uh, by right, it should not ask a question, but uh, maybe, maybe we don't need to do this here. Let's try this again. Oh, it did not exit. You see what happened when you don't put exit? It does not exit, it just, you know, goes back again. So that's why when you want to use the key interrupting me, you'll have to put the exit. What if we don't put goodbye? Let's see what happens here. Yes. Or just close the window. Okay, so if you were not concerned about this problem whatsoever, you can just close the window. So so that I'll give you a minute to take a look at it or a screen or pause and then write it down or whatever. But uh, I'm going to remove it and then just close the window. Okay, so just drop this so that we simplify the program a little bit. And don't forget to untab the program. And also, I want this to be a little bit faster, so let's make this faster. So compile, okay, run, control C, cause the error, but who cares, we just close the window. Okay, so now we have done with the first task, which is measure the data. So this is now the water height. Okay, so now based on this water height, open on close gate. Okay, good. So now this is just a print statement. It does not assign any value. You get know I me? Mean? It does not assign any item. So we can actually now uh, define some things, a few things. So we can actually come here and define water height equal zero point zero. And uh, we're gonna come down here and before the print statement, we're gonna just do this, water height equal to X. And what's going on is that the water height value will be updated. Every time this loops once, so at first it's gonna be 2.2, then 2.8, then 3.3, and then so on. Why? For fun, and you will see later why. But for now, we're just gonna update the value. Nothing is gonna change here on the way out, but just for fun, let's just do it. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, so now well, let's just actually do this. Based on the water height, open and close the gate. The, the way we're gonna do this is that, the logic behind this is that, based on the maximum height, is that right? So what we're gonna do is that if water height is less than max height, what do you think? Well, the logic that we used last time, that if the water level was less than the height, well, you know what, let's just go to the, the other case, which is greater than the max. If the water has exceeded the maximum allowable level, well, what are we gonna do then? Well, in this case, we're going to close the gate. We're gonna block the water coming in all the way here. Uh, what is that thing? Okay, so close gate. Else, uh, else means obviously what? If it's within the limit, or if you want, you can just call it uh, less than or equal. So else, else means what? Means obviously means uh, less, is that right? Right, so if that's the case, what happens then? Well, if that's the case, we will open the gate. Okay, so this is a simple if statement. All right, so before we do this, we need to, uh, let's just do it right now. So we already achieved the water height, okay? And now we come here. Well, you can actually do the if statement based on water height, or you can do it on x directly, it's fine, but just for fun, it's gonna use f water height is greater than or equal 
to max height. Uh, then what? Well, if that's the case, we're going to have to close the gate. Where is that? Okay, close gate. Is that right? Uh, how are you going to close the gate? Um, in a minute. But first, let's just do this. And then else, well, obviously, over here is greater than or equal. Else is less than, so we don't have to actually mention it. So else, um, obviously, close the gate. Uh, sorry, open the gate. And that's it. You get me? So that's essentially the automate other elements. Is that right? So automate. Uh, where is that thing? Automate other elements. Automate gate. Is that right? Now, how are you going to open and close the gate? Actually, once again, we don't have the controller here with us. So we're going to have to simulate it. In reality, over here, I'll be calling another function, and that other function will be calling, will be talking to the simulator, and so on and so forth. Just like here, this water height will be talking to another function that is linked to the sensor. So the sensor will capture the information, and then we're going to capture the value here. The same thing here. To close the gate, we will have another function that talks to the gate. But for now, we're going to actually simulate this using a Boolean. What we're going to do is simply we're going to gate status. We're going to then set to false. That's it. Now, we need to define a few things. I, um, you know what? I'm sort of, let's not do this yet. This is a lot. So let's just actually, before we get to the status or whatever, right? let's just verify something. Uh, I want to control what I'm seeing here. So what's going on here is that if, if the water is greater than the maximum level, we're going to print. And if it's less than that, it's also going to print. So if you leave it like this, it won't make any sense because this action is exactly the same as this action. By the way, if you find yourself doing an F statement and in both sides of the F statement, you're copying exactly the same command, then obviously something is wrong. Either you don't need the F statement or you have to change something. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. So this right here, we're going to actually update the statement. We're going to say, OK, what do you think now? If the water level is greater than the height, the gate will be closed. So let's just update the status here. So we can say gate closed. Is that right? And uh, yeah, let's just put a small space here, gate closed. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Oops, sorry. And we're going to do the same thing here. Copy and V here, and it's going to be gate opened. OK? Now, let's talk about this. See, this won't work because we haven't defined this variable yet. So we have to come over here and define the variable. Maximum height. So maximum height, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my maximum height somewhere in the middle here. If you look at this data range, it starts with 2.2, 2.8, 3, 3 something, 4, 4 something, 5, 5. So it basically, it starts with a very low level, and it rises all the way to 6. So I want the gate to close when we hit the middle point, somewhere in here. So let's just say 4.5. So I'm just going to come here now and set the maximum. You know what? Let's make it 5. 5. So basically, based on this, this is completely arbitrary. Arbitrary means it's up to you. So you set it up. OK, and this is just the initial value. So did I have to put 0 here? No, just for fun. Or just for, you know, to, you know, to make it, um, how do I say this? If you just did this, it's fine. It was still going to work. But just sometimes it's more convenient or just to ensure that you're telling the program that this is a float. OK, so now what's going to happen is that we're going to loop through these. And when the value is actually, when the water value is less than 4.5, we're going to get here. And when it's greater than 4.5, such as AKA here, we're going to get here. So we're going to get number, number, then oh, close, 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 close. Sorry, uh, open, 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 then suddenly close, 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 close. All right? So let's compile and execute. So open, 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 and then close, close, close. close. Then open. And the reason why it repeats is because we are looping. Let's just slow it down a little bit. So let's go back here and put this uh, as 4. In real life, by the way, the water level does not really change that fast unless it's a storm. So in regular times, usually it's going to take a long, it takes about minutes or sometimes hours. 
So right now the gate is open because the water level is lower than the level. You know what, this is still fast. So let's make this uh, one, one second. So, so right now the water level is actually less than the level. And that's why the gate is open. Once we hit 4.5 or more than uh, five, sorry. Once it's more than five, the gates start to close. And the reason why it opens up again is because we are looping through the values. I did not put random because the water level don't, do not go in random. They go gradual, either up or down. If you wanted to add more or more values, like increase this range more, up to you. Or if you want to create a loop to create this loop and simulate it, can also. I'll leave that part for you. But for me and for, for the purposes of this tutorial, this is good enough. OK, so now we, um, how do we do this again? Uh, so now uh, I want to actually create the stairs. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, apart from just this, I also want to do this. So water height is equal to x. I'm going to put it here and uh, also put it here. I know I just said don't put the same command on both sides, but this is actually important. Um, what am I saying? Let's just do that. Let's not do that. So water height is equal to x. Let's put it here. And, uh, and then now, so what we're going to do right now, apart from this, we can actually update the status. So we're going to come up here and create a new variable called gate status. And by default, the gate will be open, so therefore true. So that actually tells the program that this is a Boolean. So Boolean, uh, true or false, and initial value, initial status is open. Okay. So we're going to agree now that uh, true, true means open. And obviously, the other side will be closed. So true means open, initial condition open and false will be closed. So now, since the gate is closed, as you can see from here, and since the water level is greater than maximum, we're gonna do this, gate status equal to false. So essentially, we are changing the status of the gate to closed. We are essentially uh, simulating or closing, closing gate. Uh, Sir, so why use Boolean? Why not use text? We could, but there is a reason why I'm using Boolean, and I'm going to show you that reason later. But for now, let's just set or accept to use Boolean. And essentially, um, open. OK, what else? So now, what we're going to do right now is uh, OK. So this is essentially uh, the gate status and also the water level. Is that right? And uh, and the water, yeah, OK. So now what else are we going to need? So let's take a look at the algorithm here. Oh, wait, why is the algorithm is before? <laughs> OK, fine. Uh, let's take this stuff up and put it here. And uh, just this is just for housekeeping or for just organization. So we need to capture the water level and status already done and other info. Okay, other info is, you know what, let's just broadcast something else. So let's just create another variable. Let's call it statement. Yeah. A statement is just a text, just a string. Um, we want to sort of give a comment what's going on here. So we're just going to, as if you are telling someone what's going on. So what's going on here is that, uh, as you can see, when we are here, right, the water level is high. We can say water level exceeds limits. Is that right? Uh, gate, uh, no need for to repeat ourselves. Water level exceeds our limit, good enough. It's just a statement uh, to tell who is ever listening that currently the water level is beyond high. Maybe this information will be useful. Maybe you want to send something else, like the temperature or something like that. And we're going to repeat the same process here. And we're going to say water level within limits. So when I see the water level value, I can tell that it's actually less or greater than the height. So why we need this? Well, in order for you to know this or to use the number, you need to know what's the maximum level. You need to know what is the maximum height given. Maybe you are not aware of it. Maybe you are. Maybe your maximum is not the same as the maximum for somebody else. 
So that's why this is a general statement that generally speaking, we are within limits. Okay, it doesn't say what the limit is, but just say we are okay. And this is says that, oh, sorry, this is exceeding limit and this is, we are within limits. Okay, all right, so this was not defined earlier. So let's go up here and define it. You know what, let's run it. And we're gonna get an error or no error. Uh, maybe let's just compile it first, successfully. Um, you cannot do this in C. We cannot create a variable and assign it straight away here. Um, so that's why we need to actually create a variable and give it a blank string here. And that will actually uh, allow it to update both sides of the SC. Okay. So right now on the outside, nothing is going to change. This is just, it's not going to change this because we only have one print statement. Is that right? Um, so this guy and this guy, they don't change stuff. Yet. So why we need them? Well, we need them because uh, remember we need to broadcast this information. We need to broadcast status of the gate. Uh, so what is the information that we need to broadcast? Uh, we need to broadcast uh, water level, state gate status, and statement. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. And before we actually broadcast this information, we need to have them. So this is what we did just now was uh, the raw data. Remember in, in, in this document, we said that in order for you to broadcast the information to the cloud, you have to capture the raw data. So we could also say set up raw data. Is it raw or raw? I, forgot. I don't remember which one of these data. Okay, and this is what we did here. Essentially, this is what we just did in this line. We set it up. And the data is set up also based on the current water level. So based on that level, uh, we have a, the status of the gate. We have uh, a print statement. Uh, we're not going to broadcast the print statement, so we might as well just take this one, not take it out, leave it uh, for another purpose. And we then uh, put this one here, and we put the print statement here. Now what's the, okay, so the water level is right here, we already caught it. And then the gate status is here and the statement is here. Now the water height will be the same, regardless of whether it's within the level, I mean, it will be, it will not be affected by this. Uh, but based on the water level, these two will be updated. So that's why they, these two are inside the if statement. So what's the purpose of the print statement? Well, actually it does have a purpose, which is right here. This is, the print statement is for you to know what's going on. So you know that the, the data that you want has been captured and, and, and broadcast. So if I actually remove this from the program, it will not affect what we're about to do next, which is the IoT. So after this point, we have captured the raw data and then now we're ready to broadcast. Okay, so uh, you know what? Um, let me close this other file here. Uh, you know what? No, that's not. I need it. So basically, what we're going to need to do right now is we need to start broadcasting information. So as we remember, in order to broadcast information, we need to, first of all, uh, establish network, establish connection, and then package data, package data, and then finally publish. And these are the three steps we'll do. These last two steps are actually done in one shot or in one place. No, not one place. I mean, they're done separately, but then one function. So let's just do it. But this one, obviously, we're going to do it here ourselves. So how are you going to establish connection? Obviously, your device running the machine, running this program has to be connected. So if you're running this from a laptop, obviously, you need to have internet connection. I'm already connected. If you are running this on a Raspberry Pi, then you have to connect the Raspberry Pi first. The Raspberry Pi is a computer on its own. So therefore, if you remember when we worked, we didn't. Um, if we have worked with, if you work with the Raspberry Pi, then you will know that once you start it, then you will have the exactly a place for you to connect it to the Wi-Fi, exactly like your regular laptop. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, that here. Maybe next time I'll show you some screenshots. The same thing for the Arduino. Uh, but the Arduino is not an operating system, so there's, there's, it's not the same way. You have to establish connection separately. But the point is that you have to do that outside of this program. So once, uh, so what this, what was the point of this then? 
Now, I'm coming to that. Uh, first, you'd have to make sure that your device is connected, and then you'd have to establish connection within program. So once you make sure that your device is connected, you'll have to now make sure that this program that you're creating right now is connected to the internet. And what we're going to do that is actually we're going to use Dweepy. And Dweepy is a program that is a library that is actually going to help us do this. So we're going to actually import Dweepy. Now, import Dweepy. And Dweepy actually is, uh, this name, Dweepy, is three things in one. Um, this we right here comes from the word tweet. And the reason why they put D in front, not a T, is because it's data. Data tweet. And pi here for Python. So this is a library. So this name right here is a three things in one. Just to explain to you where the name come from. It's data tweet. That's the name of the library for Python. Sir, does that mean that we have data tweet for another language? Yes, but let's not worry about that right now. So Dweepy is a library that does several things. The library will actually help us do all of these three steps together. It will help us establish connection. Uh, in fact, only by doing this, you already did this part. Only by importing Dweepy, everything done or needed for this is already done in the behind the scenes. So you don't have to actually write any command to do this part. All you have to do is import Dweepy. However, if you do this right now, if you actually run this, if you write this command right now and run the program, see my program will run. Actually, it, if you notice, it's now a little bit slower. That's because when you run this for the first time, it will establish connection. I'll try and do that one more time. So don't, don't try and do it on your own, on your side. You're going to get an error. I'm going to get to that in a second. But if you run it here, it's, when you run it for the first time, it's going to be slow a little bit, a few seconds. Because in this few seconds, Dweepy is going to establish connection. And if you already have Wi-Fi on your device, it will work. Now, um, if you try to run it now on your program, it won't work. You're going to get something called library error or module error. Go ahead. You can pause the video right now and try it. Just do this. In fact, you can, die, it can start a new program altogether and import Dweepy right here and save as something Python and run it, a blank program. You're going to get the same error. And the reason for that is uh, we are, I'm importing a library. Now, this library, in order for you to import it, where are you going to, I mean, when you import a library, how does it work? Like, for example, here, how does actually import work? Remember when we talked about libraries before, we said a library essentially is another program. Somebody wrote it before you, another Python program. And all you're really telling the, pro the compiler is, you know what, that program included with this program and then make them work together. So in order for you to import a library, that library has to be already installed on your computer. It has to be saved on your library, on your, on your drive. So if you go and try and import Dweepy right now, it won't work. That's because Dweepy is not on your machine. You'll have to install it. But sir, this worked. Well, because time is a core library. It's a library that comes with Python or with, um, yeah, with Python. So that's why it's already built in. But this is called a third party library. So third party. And this is actually core library. A core library comes with Python, so it's already built in, so you don't have to install it. But this one is a third party. Third party means it's basically created by someone other than you or Python. You see, the, the people who created Python is the f second party, and you are the first party. So the third party is a third you know, party that created this program. So that's why you need to include that in here. Now. In normal cases, we will be working with Raspberry Pi, so therefore Linux. So it's easy to install the library there. But for here, you will have to install this library into, into Windows. So for your case, you'll have to Google it. So you'll have to go here and say, uh, install Dweepy Windows, or Windows 10 if you want to be specific. Is that right? Uh, not Dweepy. Dweepy. 
And then you can actually see how to install it. So create a database. So you can actually see a lot of stuff here. Unable to import module. The, this is already here. Uh, you know what? Let me check on this. I'll be back in a second. OK, we're back. So basically, to install a package, any package, or any third-party library to Python is actually very simple. All you have to do is just PIP, or, and then install, and then the library, dweep. It's, uh, as I'm, I've never done this for quite some time, or I usually work on Linux or Raspberry Pi. But it's actually, it's almost the same thing. And in Linux, we, would, we cannot use pip. We can have to use something else, but it's the same concept. Now, when I run it here, it's going to tell me that it's already installed. So it's fine. But for your case, it won't. So it will actually install it. So obviously, you have to make sure that you're connected to the internet. And then you basically then, uh, you will be able to install it. Once this is done, you can then close the window. Uh, and then test it again. Now, I suggest strongly that you test Dweepy first. What does that mean? It means don't run the rest of the program. Create a blank program. Just um, uh, import Dweepy, and that's it. And if you want, print a statement, just a uh, uh, diagnostic print statement. Uh, print all is good. All is okay. Now, if you run the program and you see all is okay, or if you want to, you want uh, library install. Okay. If you want to be even more specific, dweepy library install. Install. Okay. So file save as uh, dweepy test dot py. We're going to put it here, OK? And then essentially, uh, what's going to happen here is that if you're, uh, so what you're going to do, first of all, uh, install Dweepy. pip install Dweepy. So PIP. PIP stands for Python Package Installer. I don't know why they put PIP rather than PPI, but that's it. So install uh, Dweepy. Is that right? And then make sure that it's installed. Once it's installed and everything, and then come here and run this program. If the installation is done correctly, you're going to see this statement right here. If it's not, then you're going to get a module error. Module, essentially, is another word for library. You're going to tell you that this library does not exist. So, dweep library installed. That means it's indeed installed. If it wasn't, you know what? I want to try something else. So, this is another fake name. So, this is not really any library. So, I'm going to show you what work, what happens if this error, if, if this is actually there. Notice, by the way, that it compiled, right? So run, and this is import error, no module named Tweepy. Right now, if you haven't installed Tweepy yet, this is going to be the error you're going to see. Now, this error comes if you, for two reasons. Either you haven't yet installed the library, or you type the name of the library wrong. So make sure that you put it correctly. It's with a small letter, not with a capital letter. So save, run. Uh, oh, I didn't compile. So compile. OK, and then run. <laughs> uh, oh, I did type it wrong. So dweeby, not dp. So compile, and then run, and we're good to go. Is that right? OK, so now we're back to our program. If you still working on that or need some time to do it, maybe you can pause right now and then go and install dweeby, and then come back when, you're, when it's all good. OK, so now we are done with dweeby. And this part of using uh, or the IoT program is all done. By simply importing the library, this part is done. The program now is connected to the internet. All you have to do now is move on to the next two steps, which is packaging the data. Now, packaging the data is simple. All you really have to do is to take this information, uh, sorry, this information, these three items, one, two, and three, and put them in a dictionary. You see, JSON format. JSION, which is short for JavaScript something, or object and application. Oh. Uh, just JavaScript object, um, not, um, I forgot. Um, I don't know what N stands for, I forgot. But anyway, uh, it's a way of organizing data. And the way that they use that is actually using um, dictionary. So the best way to do this, rather than make a big mess right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function right here. I'm going to call this function uh, update IoT. Yeah, I'm going to actually 
create a function. I haven't yet written this function yet, so I'm just going to call it update IoT. And update IoT essentially, what does that mean? Is it will do the second two steps here. It will package the data and it's going to publish the data. So in order for it to work, it needs the data. So what are the data that you're looking for? Well, the first one is the water height. Is that right? You could take x if you want, which is this value right here, or if you want to be systematic like me, so do it this, this way. And then gate status as well as statement. Oh, uh, statement is capital letter for some reason. Let's not make that mistake. So state, oops, state, Meant. Where did it go? Yeah, stay. And then, and that's it. So I'm going to do the same thing, the same line here. Uh, uh, here, actually. Actually, before the print statement, not after the print statement. Uh, why? Uh, what's the difference? You will see later. For now, now, sir, earlier you said don't repeat the same code. Uh, in the two sides of the, in, of the if statement. Actually, you're right. But the thing is, this value here and this value here is not the same, right? You see, this value here is false, and this is true. So whatever gate state is going to be here is going to be actually, uh, you know what? It's the same thing, right? Yeah, you're right. It's still the same thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, actually, and put it outside. I'm going to. Put it here. Yeah. So what's gonna ha what's actually going on here? You see, let's just uh, pause for a second and, and discuss this code. So first of all, water height is here. Uh, it's already been set here. Okay. So no matter what's going on here, the water value is not going to change. So it's right here. Let's get that out of the way. Then the gate status is set. It's either here or here. But whatever, which one is set is going to be used once. So let's say if the value was exceeding, so this is going to be false. So this is going to be now broadcast as false. If it comes back again or the next time come back in, it was actually below the limit, so it's going to be true. So this is going to be true. So yes, once again, do not put the same code in both sides of the if statement. The same thing for the statement. The statement here is this value. So if the value was exceeding the limit, so this value will be here. And if it was less than the limit, then this value will be here. So essentially, we are using the if statement just to set the values. But we're going to broadcast the values whichever they have been set. You don't actually put this inside here, inside the if statement. Because if you do, you're going to be doing the internet things twice. And this is not a good practice, and you will see the reason for that in a minute. So just to put a, a specific note here is uh, try to minimize these. You see, every time you use an IoT function or a program, um, you need to minimize it, because every time you do this, you're using the internet. So if your internet is actually not fast enough, it's going to slow down the whole thing. So you want to minimize this, because if you actually use this multiple times, you're going to use the bandwidth of your internet a lot. So you want to minimize this as much as possible. So limit this to just one time of your program, maybe two max, but no more than that. OK, so this is the function. Right now, if I run this program or compile it, I'm going to get an error, because it's no error, but it's going to give me a problem. Yep, a problem is right here. It's going to tell me that this function right here is unknown. We have not defined it. So let's go ahead and define it. So I'm going to come all the way down here and define it. So IoT function. What does it do? It package the data. And you know what? P package and publish the data. Package and publish the data. Okay, this data set is going to be part of our initial setup, uh, part of these guys as well. Okay, so as you can see here, and this is a function, so everything is going to have to come down here. So this function right here, it takes three parameters, so we need to define them here. 
So we cannot just copy paste those guys. It's not a good practice. So let's just focus on using the scope properly. So when you put the parameters here, don't use exactly the same words. Instead, try to use different variables just to make it different. So let's just call this edge for height. Uh, no, just height. And this is status. And this is text. Or maybe text is a very common word, so word, words, OK? So, so what are we going to do? Well, first of all, what we're going to do is that we need to actually build a dictionary. Uh, what does that mean? We can actually create uh, a dictionary. And this is now we're going to call it IOT, IOT data. Now, remember from our previous tutorial on lists, we did actually build a dictionary before. It's right here. Is that right? And in fact, I'm going to, if you forgot that video, I suggest you pause right now and go and watch it, which is on lists and dictionaries. So take this guy right here, and, uh, and I'm going to put it in our program. And it is right here. And I'm just going to use the name IoT data. So as you can see in a dictionary, you have key and value, key and value. And we only have three values. So I'm just going to throw away those guys and this last comma here. And now we're going to actually now use the key. So the key is important. Uh, the first key is what? Is water height. This is now uh, the name of the object. And right here is gate status. And finally, is this is statement. So these are the keys. If you remember the dictionary, then you know what the key is. If you forgot, once again, I suggest you go back and watch that video. So now, what about the values? Well, it's right here. So height, and over here is status, and finally is word. Or you don't want this to call it statement, or the statement, words. No, statements, OK? OK, and then essentially, this is now the dictionary. If I just run the program, nothing is going to happen. Because all we did was we just, this is now the packaging of the data. This is the part where package the data into JSON. See, this dictionary format right here is designed for JSON. For, you know what, uh, I'm tired of this. So let's go and figure it out. So JSON stand for JavaScript object notation. That's the last word that I forgot. So it's a way of organizing data. I suggest you come here and read more about this. It's really a good read. It's not really difficult to read. I suggest that you go actually go ahead and, and read it. So let's get back to our program. And when you read it, you will realize that actually what they're describing over there is describing this, a dictionary. OK, fine. So this is the first part, which is packaging. What about the broadcasting? Or oh, sorry, the publish. Publish the data. So to publish the data, we're going to use DWP again. DWP has a nice function called dweepy.tweet. Four. And what's going on here is that you are going to take this function right here takes two things. Takes uh, This function right here is going to actually broadcast the data. It's going to do the work for you. So what does this function require? Two things. First of all, uh, a name. Uh, this name I'm entering right now is the name of your thing. Remember Internet of Things? Everything has to be unique. Is that right? So this is the name of your thing. It has to be something. Do not use the same name I'm putting right now. I'm putting right now IOT, oh, you know what, E and M. No, let's not use uh, symbols. E and M simulated IOT or SIM IOT. OK, now do not use the same word you see here, M, E, N, M. Because this, is, this has to be unique from everything to another. This right here represents my device. 
not yours. So when you write this program, you can write whatever you want as long as it's one unit. Do not put spaces, do not do this. So make sure that if you want to use multiple words, use underscore or just one word. You know what I mean? But make sure that no spaces and make sure it's unique. What's the second item? The second item is this guy, the dictionary. So, and that's it. That is all of it. You know what? Uh, I'm going to use a different uh, thing name. So I'm going to actually change this to something else. So this is essentially uh, my own unique name. You can put your own name, whatever, it's fine. Whatever, whatever you want here, as long as you remember it, and as long as it's essentially uh, unique. And this right here is the dictionary that you constructed here. So let's recap what's going on here. First, you, we created some simulated sensor data. Let's just ignore this for a minute. Imagine that this is the sensor, okay? And this is the sensor data. It goes and captures the sensor values. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is gonna work. So what's going on right now? Um, we're gonna actually capture the sensor value. Based on the maximum height, it's going to update these two values. And then it's gonna print an if statement. And whether it's less than or equal, the values will be updated accordingly. Then at the end of that, you can actually uh, do this, which is gonna actually take these three values, which is the water height, the gate status, and the statement, and you can actually send it to the, uh, to the IoT network. In the update IoT, there's two steps. First of all, you're gonna use this information, the three elements, and construct a dictionary. And uh, these are just names. Yeah, you can put spaces, whatever you like, but just remember the names. And I want you to put a note to what is this. And we're gonna, we're gonna actually see this, or deal with this uh, next week. But for now, uh, just take a note. And then this is the function used from the DWP library. Essentially, we're gonna actually gonna use tweet for, and we're gonna broadcast to the cloud. Oh, error. Uh, what's going on here? Invalid syntax. Oh yeah, sorry, diff. I forgot the syntax for a function. So compile, okay, success. Diff means define function. Uh, this one is when you call it, I forgot that part. And then uh, build, no need to build, but it's fine, then run. Now notice that it takes a few seconds. Module object has not tweet for, uh, I think I'm making a mistake here. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's not tweet, it's do it for. Uh, that's an embarrassing, it's actually for data tweet, not tweet. So compile and run. Here we go, it's actually running. Now, from the point of view, I mean, from this right now, it doesn't look any different. Notice, by the way, how it is a little bit slower. You know what, I'm gonna come back here to this program and make the timer a little bit faster. Timer, 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 timer. Where's my timer? Yeah, let's make it a little bit faster. So let's make it 0.2 seconds. Is that right? Close. So this should be fast, right? Remember earlier when we run this program, it was fast. But notice this now. Even though it should be 0.2 seconds between every value, it's actually a little bit slow. It's almost one. It's almost one second or maybe two seconds. And the reason for that is that because every time you run the program, every time you loop through this, we do this step right here. And this one requires you to go to the internet and broadcast to the cloud. And the speed of this will be depending on, this, on your own internet. And that's why it's actually quite slow. But even with this speed, it's actually quite fast already, or it's quite all right. Okay, um, this is good, but then we don't see anything on the other side. So What's gonna happen? So I'm going to show you what's gonna happen on the other side, but then next week we're gonna be working with it. So I'm gonna show you freeboard, freeboard.io, yeah. So freeboard.io is the IoT client that we're going to see the data viewed. I have already done this part, so I'm gonna show you the outcome only, and next week we're gonna work on developing it. So you, you have to be a member, it's for free, and my, this one is, uh, I think this one, yeah. It's gonna take a while for the client now to establish internet connection, and then based on that, the value will change. 
and give it some time. Yep, connected and closed. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So this is the IT client. Right now it's open, so open, and the water level exceeds. Remember the status? Is that right? And uh, let's just close this for a second. Yeah. So right now the value should be uh, okay. Once again, it's slow, right, because of the internet. So it's going to take some time for this to happen. But what's going on is that you're going to see the values update. Now the value will be updating here faster because this is the local machine. And then it's going to broadcast to the internet. Then we're going to see the changes. So right now it's closed and the value is five point something. So the value is actually here. Uh, oh, I think I know what's going on. The reason why the values are not exactly 100%. Um, let, me, let me go and fix this real quick. Okay, we're back. So basically now you can see the values actually updating. So this is 4.2 and this is 5.2 and this is 4.2. And this is the status. If you remember the program when the water was below five, uh, wait a minute, when the water, now this is now uh, more than five. So the gate is, oh, again, I did not update this. Yeah, let's just quickly do this. Uh, uh, I know this is part we didn't discuss yet, uh, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll get back to this um, later. I'll show you. This is the part we're going to do next week. But for now, uh, this is, uh, yeah. So right now, okay, the water now is greater than the level. So it's 5.8. So the, after this is going to be 6.1. You know what I mean? And 6.1, the water exceeds level and the gate is closed, which is actually what you see right here. Now this is 2.2. You see? 6.1, 6.1. Now... The value is 2.2, 2.2, and because the water level is below the level, is this is going to be opened. This is not updating. I'm not sure why. Uh, let me get back to this again. Uh, let's fix it. Data source, uh, Mustang content, and statement. Oh, I think I know what's going on. It's in the program itself. No, wait, if the water exceed level, the water, if the water is greater than, if this, if it's true, then it should be within limits. So yeah, the statement should update. Statement, 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 same. yeah, it should be, it's fine. So this should actually change. So when this is closed, it should exceed, but uh, not sure why this is not updating. So let's take a look at it. So you know what, let's throw it away. Start a new one. Uh, I'll discuss these in detail later. So state and uh, value data source content and statement and no units. So this is opened exceeds limits. Should be if it's open should be within limits. Let's take a look at the program again. Exceeds within limits. Ah. Oh. Unbelievable. The value is not updating. Uh, let's close this. Run it. Okay. Or oh, just keep it here and then where's the internet? So, okay, so now this is the last value. So now the gate is open ah, within limit. That's good. So now you can see now, uh, let's close this. So now you see when the gate, when the value is actually less than five, the value is right here and the value is right here. And this is the status of the gate. This is the lamp. So when the light is on, that means open. And this is telling us the current status or the statement. And when the value gets beyond five or more than five, the values will change. These things, they do not look like interactive because only the value is changing, right? After this is gonna be 4.2. Yep, here we go. Then 4.7. Uh, it's a little bit slow because of my internet, but uh, you can, and also the combination of the sleep. So now after this is going to change, this is going to off, this is going to change, this is going to change to red, I think. So any second now. Here we go. So this is closed, exceeds, and 5.2 and so on. And this actually is a demonstration of the internet of things. We've done the work, and this was a demonstration of broadcasting data to the cloud. You have captured the data, we have sent it to the cloud, and then we show it.
In fact, I, we even did this part, but more on this in the next video or the next uh, session. So this is it. So we created the program, we simulated the data, yes, but then we did the work, which is essentially we uh, captured the values and then we processed it and then we broadcast it using uh, Dweepy. Uh, Dweepy is a blessing when it comes to Python. That's why I prefer Raspberry Pi because it does most of the work for you. All you have to do is just work with the data and then construct the, the, the dictionary and then the rest will be done automatically by the video. So I hope you guys learned from this and uh, uh, I hope this is useful for you. It's quite a long video for today, but this is it for today. See you in the next video.